Today, I'm going to go over a few of my tips and strategies for getting you into the school of music that you really want to get into. Stay tuned. What's going on guys? Aaron here, helping musicians get better, faster, through performances, educational videos, and product reviews. And again, today, I'm going over my tips and strategies to help you get into the college music department or the school of music that you really wanna get into. College auditions, super, super important. Not only are they going to get you into the school of music, they're also a thing that can stop you from getting into the school in general that you wanna get into. They can also get you money to go to the school that you wanna to go to. And they can also help you just make your decision as to what school you end up at. So not only can this audition affect your life academically in the very near future, in the far future, it can change who you're going to become professionally, depending on the program you go through. And it can also change it financially because of the scholarships you do or do not get. So if you follow the tips I go through in this video, I'm hoping that not only will you be more successful in your auditions, but also just getting into the school and finding the right school for you. So just so you guys kind of have an idea of where I'm coming from, um, when I was in high school, I kind of auditioned okay, but not well enough to get me into the two schools that I actually applied to. So I got my associate's degree, but that audition went really well, and I actually got my associate's degree for free. Not only for free, I got paid extra money in pocket to go to that community college. And then after that, I reapplied to one of the schools that didn't let me in. They actually didn't let me in academically, not musically. They let me in musically originally. But they re-let me in after I got my associate's degree, and um, I got scholarship money to go there. And then when I went for my master's degree, I applied to the other of the two schools and I got a, a assistantship that helped cover my tuition as well. So not only have I had a little bit of my audition and college failures, but I've also had a good fair amount of audition and college success. And now I'm also the tuba euphonium teacher at the University of Tampa. So now I'm on the other side of the table listening to these auditions and meeting young people like yourself trying to get into a school like mine. Let's get... So first, your junior year of high school or the year before you're looking at graduate school, the, just the year before you audition, look at all the schools that you could possibly be interested in auditioning to. A lot of times I work with students who have an idea of what school they want to go to and then they look into the music department or the bands that they have or the financial situation or you know the things and they find out that the school itself doesn't actually have what they thought it would have um, and they were just really interested in it either because maybe a parent went or a friend went or it's close to home or it's far away from home um, but the situation actually wasn't what they were looking for in their particular college experience. So what I suggest is when you're doing your research create an excel file and list all the schools that you're interested in um, their required GPAs, how much it's going to cost, scholarship opportunities, in-state, out-of-state, and then also on the music side of things, we'll talk about a little bit more later, but also information like audition materials, who their private lesson teacher is, and emails of people who you can contact, either be it in the School of Music like the front office or somebody like me, your private lesson instructor. And that's the next big thing is contact whoever, no matter what your instrument is, find out like, say you play tuba and you wanna to come to UT, uh, find out who your instrumental teacher is, which would be me. You go into the website, find tuba, the tuba teacher. There'll be a faculty list somewhere on the, on the website. Find the tuba teacher or your you know French horn teacher or whatever it is you're looking for. Find their email, copy, paste it, shoot them an email, introduce yourself, say you're interested in coming to their school. And remember, this is all a year before you're even planning to audition. And then also ask if you could possibly get a lesson with them. I know for me personally, I will give a prospective student a free lesson either online or in person at the university if they're interested in auditioning. Even if they don't audition, I'm not gonna charge them. But if they're interested and they just wanna check the school out and maybe meet me, 
then I will give them a free lesson. And I think that says something about some of the teachers who you might run into. If they don't give you a free lesson, uh, or they charge you a lot of money for the lesson, or they charge you their standard rate for the lesson, and they just treat you like another lesson, that might say a lot about how interested they are in you specifically as a student, but it can also say how guarded they are of their own time and how much they have going on. So you have to kind of pers like judge that on what you make out of that. Um, I know for me, everybody who gave a free perspective lesson were not only the people I ended up going to, but they also were the people who not only treated me the best, but also were most interested in me and my education. And if you get to take that lesson, remember, it's a chance for you to interview them just as much as it's a chance for them to meet and interview you. You're gonna play for them and all that kind of stuff, but make sure you, like, not only, you know, are they nice and what, do you get along with them, but do they actually make you any better in the lesson or do you take away something from that lesson that you didn't have before you walked into that room? And remember, it's not just the best players that you're looking to get an education from. The best players don't necessarily make the best teachers. It also doesn't mean that they're not going to be good teachers if they're good players, but don't base how good they can play Carnival Venice on whether or not four years out of college with them is gonna be worth it or not. This will also give you a chance to test out your audition materials. Not only do you get to play it for them, but you get to find out if you know it's good materials for that person uh, for you to audition with and also things you can improve on or maybe some artistic style things that that person might happen to like. Um, so when you go and audition for them, you're better informed as to how to play your audition piece um, and that can help, you know, just prepare you for that situation once you get into the audition room with that one particular person. And remember, it is your private lesson teacher, your studio teacher, that is the gatekeeper for the most part. That is the person that when you walk out of the room, they look at the rest of the panel or whoever it is and they say yes or no, or yes with money, or yes with a lot of money, or yes but no money. A lot of you from high school have this impression that the band director is the one who's gonna oversee everything. And in high school it kind of works like that, but in college it's really your private lesson instructor. And keep in mind, if you don't like that person, and but you really like the school, Remember that that person, your private lesson teacher, has whether or not you get into the school, whether or not you get money, then once you get in, once you are there, you are going to be alone in a room with them for an hour every single day for four years straight. You're probably going to be in some sort of instrumental ensemble like trombone choir or tuba youth ensemble or something like that. And you might have another extra studio class with them. So that's being in a room with them with maybe 10 to 20 other people. So you're going to see this person and communicate and have to deal with this person a lot. And then when it comes to your juries and your sophomore barrier, which a lot of schools have, which can stop you from moving on, that's your private lesson teacher. They can kick you out of the school of music if they don't like you or if you're not doing well with them. So not only can they keep you from getting into the school, once you get in there, they can kick you out too. So remember, if you don't like that person, that's probably not a school you need to be at. But anyway, so now we've kind of narrowed it down. We, know, we now know where we're going and what it's gonna take to get there. So we're going into our audition year. What are the next steps? The first thing you just need to know going into this phase, this is your priority. I get a lot of questions like, hey, I have my college auditions coming up in like October, but Allstate happens on August. Should I split my time between them? What should I focus most of my time? It, it, the college audition. Remember that big rant I went on in the beginning about the college audition and how important it is? You know how many times I've been asked in my professional life if I've made Allstate or solo and ensemble, if I got a superior at that, or if I was first chair at you know, district, honor, county, band, whatever? Never, never. But every resume I ever put in asked me what school I went to. Not to mention that most of the jobs I've interviewed for or positions I've interviewed for have contacted my private lesson teacher and other professors from my university. To get a recommendation for me to have my job at UT, they didn't contact the person who was my all county clinician in 2007. Shut up, yes, I'm that old. They contacted Kevin Stees and Jay Hunsberger 
who were my private lesson teachers when I was in college and in graduate school. So do you get th this is important. Now, some of you know if you can handle splitting it. Uh, some of you have no idea. Just remember what the priority is. Now we're getting into it. We need to select the materials that you're actually going to audition with. Now, remember that Excel file I had you set up before we actually like got into this whole process? Well, now you're going to look at the audition materials. Most places, it's just going to be a, you know, a lyrical and a technical solo or etude or two pieces of contrasting style. You'll hear that a lot, which doesn't just mean fast and slow. It also can mean new and old. Um, you're going to see that a lot, but if there's any place that has required specific materials or you have multiple places like that, see if those places, uh, inner, like they line up together, like they have the same piece or see if you can use those pieces for all of your auditions anyway. What I actually typically suggest of my students is whatever solo we pick for their junior year, I make sure it's contrasting to whatever solo they pick their senior year, so that way they have two different solos that they don't have to relearn that they can just use for their college auditions. And sometimes, like for me, if it's a longer solo, 8, 12, 16 minutes, or a big old concerto or something like that, typically just using that one particular piece is good enough for me. Now, some schools, or if you're going into graduate school, you're gonna get into etudes and significant repertoire for the instrument and stuff like that. Um, I'm just kind of speaking on a generality basis um, and how to attack that. Once you really fill out that Excel file and kind of pay attention to what all the pieces are, you'll get a better idea of what you're going to need. And I would suggest doing that about a year before you actually go into the audition. And remember, with your materials, don't feel pressured to pick something that's ridiculously hard. Don't feel pressured to play things that other people are playing, especially if you don't even like those pieces. I would rather hear a, you know, technically or uh, range-wise or whatever, a not so challenging piece be played extremely artistically than to hear somebody attempt and fumble all over something that they aren't, you know, artistically or technically prepared to tackle. Now, when it comes to the actual school itself, make sure that you apply early and make sure that you alert the private lesson instructor that you have applied. I just like when I know that the students who are looking into my university are on top of things, that makes me a little bit more enthusiastic to invite them into my studio. And on the university side of things, um, a lot of universities won't tell you this, but it really is kind of first come first serve, especially with scholarship money. Um, if I meet somebody who plays really well and I give them scholarship money, typically for me as a private lesson teacher, it doesn't work for everyone like this, but for me, it seems like if I give somebody money and then I have three other fantastic people and the last one who auditions for me is the best one, but I'm out of, I'm out of scholarship money to give them, I, I'm, I can't give them anything. I can't offer anything, but you know, the person who auditioned in November got a head start from the person who auditioned in February. And even academically, a lot of schools won't advertise this or tell you this, but it, a lot of times they're rolling basis and not just like they make their selections after a certain deadline. So finally, day of audition, you're there, you're ready to go. How are we gonna do this? Be there early. Um, make sure, you know, sometimes there's a registration type thing going on. Um, just make sure you know where you're going and how to get there. Don't play your instrument too much. But the biggest pinpoints that I can give you, be polite, not just to your private lesson teacher or your committee, but to everyone around. You don't know if the, the maybe the undergrad who checked you in, you don't know if they're in your studio and the studio teacher is going to ask them like, hey, we're, you know, what did you think of this person? And they go, well, that guy was a jerk. Don't let him in. Um, that happens, so um, be nice to everybody. Also dress nice, but don't overdo it. Um, for guys, button down, maybe a tie, pants. You don't necessarily need to be in a full blown sh uh, suit. I've had people show up in tuxedos, which was way too much. And then for ladies, you know, you wanna be nice, but you don't wanna be, um, you know, too overdone. There's no need for like a prom dress or anything like that. Um, in the South, we call it church clothes. That's kind of what you're going for. You know, Sunday brunch, that kind of a thing. Um, and just make sure if it, that you are representing yourself really well, but also make sure that you are comfy. And once you get done with your audition and all that kind of stuff, there probably will be 
some sort of an, of an interview, especially if you're in music education, and think about what kind of questions they're gonna ask you ahead of time. Like if you're music education, why do you wanna be a teacher? That's a fair question to ask somebody who's going to get a degree in that. If you wanna be a professional trombone player, what, where do you see yourself after leaving here? Do you want to play in an orchestra or would you rather be a chamber musician or do you want to be an entrepreneur? Like have answers like that ready. And when you're speaking to people, don't feel like you have to speak very quickly or that you have to answer the questions right away. You can take a breath, you can take a moment to think about it. A uh, big strategy is asking somebody to repeat the question so that gives you time to think about it. And almost every interview, either me taking the interview or giving the interview, um, you'll always end it. It's kind of a thing. You'll end it with, well, do you have any questions for us? And the questions can be uh, almost just about anything within a point. Um, they can be about you know the people you're auditioning for. They can be about the school of music or about the school in general or about the process thereafter. Um, and just have questions because that makes you seem inquisitive and part of being in academics is being inquisitive. And then after the audition, it's wait and find out where you get in and who gives you money and where to go from there. And when selecting a school, just keep in mind that you are looking for the situation that is going to be the best experience for you, that is also going to set you up for the best future when you leave. Four years is a very long time, but it's not that long in the grand scheme of your musical career. And just keep in mind that it might not be the most prestigious school, or it might not be the school that your friends are going to, um, or it might be something that you didn't expect, and that's okay. And if it's something out of the norm, that's okay. It's what you want to do, and it's what's best for you and your future down the line. I've had a lot of students have a lot of success and enjoy their experiences at colleges that I don't think they expected themselves to go to. But anyway, that leads me to my question of the day, which is, for those of you who have some experience auditioning and getting into schools of music and colleges, what are some things that you would suggest people do when they're getting ready in their process? There are a lot of things I'm sure I missed in this video and there's so much more that I could go over. So if you have any pieces of advice, leave that in the comments down below. Now, if you're interested in where I teach at the University of Tampa, I'll go ahead and leave a link for you to check out more information about that as well as my contact information at the university in the description down below. But otherwise, if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button to get more videos like this directly to you. And until next time, be happy but never satisfied.